Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice homemade functional equation. We have f of x squared minus x plus 1 equals x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus x. And we're going to be solving for f. I'll be presenting two methods. And I think both methods are really cool. But at the end, you'll decide which one you like better. So let us know in the comment section down below. Let's start with the first method because it's more painful. So for my first method, since I was given f of x squared minus x plus one, the argument inside the parentheses, I wanna turn it into x, like by hocus pocus, right? So we can do a little bit of math magic and call this whole thing something, how about t? Now, by making that assumption, I'm basically setting this equal to t. And my goal is to solve for x from here and then plug it in on the right hand side. Because if I plug in whatever I find from here on the left hand side or inside the parentheses, I should be getting T, right? Well, you can check it out. I'm not going to, but it should work. Let's go ahead and find out. So my goal is to solve for X and notice that this is a quadratic equation, which is awesome, right? Because we have what is called a quadratic formula. Let's go ahead and use the quadratic formula, negative B plus minus the square root of B squared minus for a c, a is one, divided by two. If you simplify this, you're gonna get one plus minus the square root of one minus four, negative three plus four t, four t minus three, right? Great. There are two values though, what's gonna happen? I need to pick one. Suppose, at this point, like uh, suppose without loss of generality, x equals one plus square root of four t minus three over two. This is what I need to substitute for x. Now, what would happen if you follow the other branch? You should get the same thing, but please check it out and let us know because I haven't, but it should work. Now, let's go ahead and plug this in. What do I have? I have f of x squared minus x plus one equals x to the fourth minus two x cubed plus x. Uh-oh, a quart tick on the right-hand side. Great, so we just set this whole thing equal to t, so that should be f of t, and now I'm replacing x with this right here you see that okay keep an eye so it's going to be one plus the square root of 40 minus three all over two i need to raise it to the fourth power that's my x by the way minus two times one plus the square root of 40 minus three divided by two again now this time i'm going to raise it to the third and finally i'm just going to add that to the whole thing right Great. Now, if you simplify this expression, don't worry, I'm not going to give you all the steps. But if you do each one of these, I'll show you each one separately. So f of t is going to look like this. The top one, I mean, the first one is going to be the fourth power. You're going to get t squared plus t times the quantity 4t minus 3. Obviously, certain things are going to simplify here. Minus 1 half times the radical minus 1 half. And the second one is going to be minus t times the square root of 4t minus 3, minus 3t plus 2. And the third one, which is the same thing itself, I can kind of add it as 1 half plus 1 half times the radical. I just separated it into two pieces. Now, I'm supposed to add these all, uh, all, all up. And when I do, I notice that these two cancel out. These two cancel out, right? What else? Uh, let's see. I have a negative one half and positive one half. They do cancel out. Awesome, beautiful. And I end up with t squared minus 3t plus 2. Beautiful. So f of t becomes t squared minus 3t plus 2. Isn't that beautiful? So what does this imply? I was trying to solve for f of x or just f. doesn't matter. You can still stick to t, but most of the time we prefer x as our independent variable, right? And y is the dependent variable. But if you just replace t with x, by the way, this is not the same x that we've been using, right? Obviously, things have changed, but you would be getting f of x as x squared minus 3x plus 2. Make sense? Great. But this is just the first method. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. By the way, second method will be branched off into two pieces. So the first piece I want to call 2a. You know what I'm going to call the second piece, right? Okay, we'll talk about that later. So f of x squared minus x plus 1 is x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus x. So here's how it works. I noticed that, it's like pretend to be surprised, 
I notice that this is x squared and this is x to the fourth. So if I square what's inside the parentheses, I should be getting something relevant, right? Let's go ahead and square this thing. And if I do square that, I get x to the fourth plus x squared plus one minus two x cubed plus two x squared minus two x. You can arrange this a little bit, x to the fourth minus two x cubed plus three x squared minus two x plus one. And this is x squared minus x plus one squared. Great. Now, it, that's not what I have on the right hand side, but we are getting closer. Why? Because I got this part, they have in common, right? So all I have to do is get rid of this guy and change this to plus x and get rid of the one. Hmm, that seems like a lot of work. Well, we can do it. Look, if I take this expression, x squared minus x plus one squared, right? And then from this, remember, I'm trying to get to uh, just, all I need is plus x. So I have to turn this whole thing into plus x. How is that possible? So all I have to do is the following. I need to subtract three x squared so that I can get rid of the x squared. There's no x squared, right? And then I need to add three x because I need one x and I have negative two x. Makes sense again, right? And then finally, I have no constants, so I need to subtract one, right? Okay, great. Uh, and if I subtract one, just minus one here, that should work, shouldn't it? Let's find out. This is something squared, remember? What was it? X squared minus X plus one. And then minus, I wanna take out a three. So now I have X squared minus X. These two can be factored, but wait a minute. This is not gonna be a multiple of X squared minus X plus one. So I need to add one inside the parentheses. You haven't seen it, right? So I can just substitute an additional three. And that additional three is basically gonna bring me a two there. So let's go ahead and turn this into a plus two so that I can basically Actually, that's not right. I should make this a minus three. Okay, I'm just working backwards. And then, of course, uh, that's minus three, but I didn't have a three, I had a one, so I need to add plus one to this, right? Or plus two to this, sorry about that. I keep getting confused. So basically, all I need to do is plus two here, right? Because that's one minus three, which is a negative two, and then plus two, that'll be zero. Make sense? Great, so now this is what I have. This is a square, by the way. I have f of x squared minus x plus one equals x squared minus x plus one squared minus three times that plus two. And this is just awesome, don't you think? Now we can go ahead and replace this whole thing with t and then t with x, or we can do it more directly and just set this whole thing equal to x, and we're gonna get f of x equals x squared minus three x plus two. Okay, that brings us to the same point, and also brings us to to be, or not to be, that's why I came up with two branches, right? No, no really, it just popped up. I thought about it, and then I'm like, okay, this is another um, way to look at it. So this is what we're given, and here's what I'm gonna do. Instead of calling the whole thing t or something else, I just wanna focus on this because this is kinda of a little easier to square, don't you think? Let's call it y. Don't ask why. x squared minus x is equal to y. If I square both sides, I get x to the fourth minus two x cubed plus x squared equals y squared. This is kinda of nice because I have fewer terms to get rid of, the only thing being x squared. So now, what am I getting from here? Let's find out. We have now x to the fourth minus two x cubed plus x squared, right? But I need to turn this into the right-hand side, which is this. How do you turn this into that, right? Hocus pocus abracadabra is what you need to do. You need to subtract x squared and add x so that these two will cancel out and you're gonna end up with that expression right there. Make sense? Okay, cool. So here's what it means. This is y squared, right? minus, and this is y. And like, why? Because that's what it is. So this becomes y squared minus y. 
wait a minute. What is y squared minus y though, right? Where does that come from? Well, it came from this assumption, right? So f of y plus 1 equals this. f of, remember that, y plus 1 equals y squared minus y. And now I can go ahead and replace y with x minus 1. Again, another trick that we use all the time to get f of x. So f of x minus 1 plus 1, which is f of x, becomes x minus 1 squared minus x minus 1. Again, this is how the problem came about, by the way. Remember, I called this a homemade problem. That's how I thought about the problem, because a little bit of complications here and there. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.